So this is Nick Faldo giving a clinic to literally about a dozen people and I was able to be a part of it. This is a question that I asked him toward the end of the session about how he controls distances with his wedges and I found the whole thing just super fascinating. I'm going to publish um, this entire clinic in some different segments because I think the whole thing all at once is, is just too much. It was an hour and 20 minutes. So this is a little segment on wedges and it's really cool because the clinic is given to elite junior golfers. So he doesn't water it down for the general public. This is real deal type stuff and throughout the entire clinic is just real deal Nick Faldo competing, how he handles pressure, how he really, really went about his craft. And um, I thought it was super fascinating and um, Truth be told, is his stuff was really quite consistent with how I've sort of gone about things. So it just served to validate that for me personally, I found it really interesting that, that it was sort of validating how I was thinking about things too. And, uh, and then a bunch, right? So, um, but really, really cool stuff. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's um, a little bit windy. I did all I could to cut out some of the wind, but I'm not a, an audio expert. And um, I think it's, it, it's definitely tolerable for my ears. And I think the content is just spectacular. And it's totally worth it to me. So I hope you guys like it. And uh, there'll be more of these to come. He gets into full swing and all kinds of stuff that I think is really going to be beneficial for everyone. So enjoy it, guys. This is the Golf Essentials Podcast with Casey Bork. Hey, Nick. Quick question. I'm curious what kind of what kind of system do you deploy for controlling distance and direction with your wedges? Are you more like a mathematical guy or are you more uh, of a feel guy? Oh uh, yeah, good that's a good, good, good point. You know? So I call it the clock face. Um, so to me that is nine o'clock. Three. There's my clock at six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Yeah. So I know this part's just a little tricky to understand. He explains when you're on the range to put markers out on the driving range in various distances, say 10 yard increments, up until whatever the full length yardage for that club is. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. Um, and then the technique is uh, as per a clock face. So thinking of your hands and your arms as moving around a clock face. Think of your left forearm or your left arm being the, the, the hand of a clock, nine o'clock to nine o'clock. So the, the follow through matches the backswing, which lends itself to a con consistent rhythm. And we're not trying to overpower the shot. We're trying to control the distance. And he's talking about calibrating those distances. That's how it, that's his method. Uh, all really cool stuff. Um, get up across a pitching green, or somewhere even across a range or anything. Put markers out, put them out at different, you know, start at 20 yards even, 20, 25, 30 feet, all the way out to so full length of a wedge, whatever that might be. Um, and then you take your, whatever it might be, you're probably going to, most of them have three wedges, and you wedge in a gap, middle 55 to 60 or 58, whatever. So I know that if I take this club back, my hands back, nine o'clock, and I go through nine o'clock with my 55, if I go nine o'clock to nine o'clock at the same tempo, that old track man might tell me, ah, went down the hill, 61, great. Pretty good, I'm trying to strive for another 60. So I know that will give me 60 yards of carry. So we work on it, don't we? So we know, I know, so if I go 10, 10, a little further, I should hopefully get 10, 10. Hopefully, that's going to be 70 yards, something like that. Let's see. 70, yeah, I've got more wind. What about 75? Oh, I went too far. Okay. So you calibrate yourself. Bottom line is you hit 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock with each club and see what your average distance is. If you know you can carry it that distance, and then you do 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock with each club, you know your distances.
Real quick interjection here, it got pretty windy. Nick's talking about knowing carry yardages down to as short as like 20 yard pitch shots. So having a lofted club that you know you can take 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock that carries 20 yards is super handy to have. If, if I've got a 20 yard chip, if I want to carry 20 yards, it's great to find a club with a loft that you say 20 20, it kind of carries 20 yards. So I know that if I take that 20 20, it will carry 20 yards. It's nice to have that. I know if I take whatever club, I just go 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and it's going to carry 30 yards. Well, I know I've got to just play it nice and softly and keep the tempo. That's how we do it. So in this section, Nick's talking about a crossover that exists. So a full 58 degree flies 85 yards for him, but if the lie is sort of sketchy, then it might make some sense to do a 10 o'clock to 10 o'clock 55 degree. Um, so as you, as you figure out your carry yardages for different wedges and different clubs in your bag, you're going to notice that, say, an 8 o'clock longer club would carry the same distance as a 10 o'clock lob wedge, for instance. So he gets a little deeper too, which is really cool about how he traveled, played in different conditions, and writing all these yardages into his yardage book, which totally supports my stance on knowing your numbers, relying on the facts, and that really, really helps you gain more pre precision over time, feel more confident, play better when you're nervous. And um, at the end, he really talks about that. He talks about relying on facts and not beating yourself up. So if you get a bad yardage, make a good swing and the ball doesn't end up where you hope it would, don't blame yourself for it. The game's hard enough, guys. Now what happens is really cool. You'll then get a crossover. So for me, my 58 goes 85, right? And then I know so that's full out. So if I'm into the wind or I'm sitting on a sandy lie, I've got to carry 85. I don't know to sure. Right? But I know... 10-10 will go 85. So that's a much safer bet, isn't it? Than trying to hit a full shot off an awkward lie with a bit too much wind. So that's when you heard us say, you know, you throttle back. So that's really cool to know. So I then know well. So now I'm feeling confident because I know what I'm doing, not just busting it or no idea. So that's a really cool so you can get in the back of your yardage book. I used to do this every week. And the other important thing is this grass. It's going to be different to other grasses across America, or the or the air density, temperature. Like when we go to the links, we're on firm old thousand year old grass at sea level. The thick air you might only get you might lose ten yards. So you need to know that. So you practice all these in different locations, and then the back of your yard is good. You have that put down all those distances thirty. 35, 40, 40, 40, and you write down all the, the clock faces if you wish and, it, and you'll get like a little sliding scale so it's nice again when you're under pressure I've got 99 yards it's downwind okay so it's playing 90 and whatever else could you say um, the lie is heavy a bit wet mm, it's got a bit. so you've got an actual sliding scale so you can then look at the hole to make it fly 90 yards off wet ground nervous, you know, might be on the last hole, rather than doing all that calculation and getting it wrong because you're under pressure, boy we've seen that enough times, and that can cause, I, I go, I, that causes everything, it's unbelievable how you can make a mistake like that and then it causes an absolute spiral like I can't play, I can't win, I can't do this. I had a real story, I had a young girl, poor thing, devastated, playing away my tournament. She came down a 17 hole at Island Lock Home. Very difficult shot, green with water front and back. She hit it in the water, it all went wrong. She was okay, she lost the ball. Absolutely. You know. And I went back out and I said to her, what happened? Da, 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 da. Talk, talk, talk. And finally she said, I got my yardage wrong. And I said, you're beating yourself up because you got your yardage wrong. Did all the maths and added instead of subtracting or something, got the wrong yard, so she hit the wrong club. So she actually had a good shot. At the end of the day, I said, So, were you aiming? She I hit it right over the flag into the water. So, you actually had a good shot, and you've beaten yourself up. She was a mess. I said, And 
TV. I never I, you know, I hit a simple wedge shot into a bunker left and you start going, what's, what's my game? I've lost it. I can't do this, especially if it's on this Sunday. I'm, you know, I'm choking. I can't handle it. And I came in and watched it on TV. I was aiming in the bunker. Oh, I did. Are you idiot? I beat myself up for the rest of the afternoon. I can't do this. You got and I was aiming in the wrong bloody place. So it's amazing. So stick to the facts. It's another way of saying stick to the facts, isn't it? When you played and shot a rotten day, go, okay, replay the, just be factual, not after a lousy, it's terrible, I hate this, you know. Go, okay, how many drives, where did my drives go? Oh my gosh, I hit, I was hitting 10 drivers today, and six of them went in the left rough. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? That's a factual. And then from that left rough, oh, the best I could do was the right rough. Okay, you see? And you see, that that's just all factual. So then he think, okay, so let's start getting the driver. If we get the driver on the fairway, whoa, what a difference on those holes. Get the driver on the fairway, hit the thing on the front of the green, and oh, made my putt. You get me? As simple as that. We all beat ourselves up. So, you know, but start with the facts. You know, if you can. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the Golf Essentials podcast, it'd be super cool if you did. If you really like the stuff, please share it with your buddies. I would really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys.